Hi, my name is Tracy Rollins with Bible Journaling Ministries. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how Bible journaling transformed my walk with God and how it can help you as well. If you stay to the end of the video, I'll share with you exactly how you can get started for free today with what you have on hand. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. I always say my first son brought me to church and my second son kept me there. You see, when I was in church, I would try to do everything possible to connect with everyone, to get into the word. I volunteered in the children's ministry. I attended the women's ministry. I had a cross. I had a cool Bible. My name was on it. I felt like I had everything. I went to Sunday church service every Sunday. It was, it was very rare for me to miss it. I absolutely loved it. But if I'm being honest with you, Reading my Bible was really hard. In fact, it was really embarrassing because I, I just couldn't get it. And I had at the time a degree in engineering and a master's in business. And so my head just couldn't wrap around the fact that I thought the Bible was just too hard for me to read. And it just didn't feel like it was for me. It was quite embarrassing, especially as I was doing quite a few volunteer and leadership positions at the church. And so I really didn't like it. I, I just dreaded actually reading the Bible because it felt like work. It felt like school. It felt like something that I just didn't want to get into. In fact, um, it, I remember this one time where we were doing a Bible study together and the verse we were supposed to look up was 1 John, whatever it was, and I couldn't find 1 John because I thought it was John 1. And so while everyone was reading that verse, I was still in John chapter 1 and everyone like totally laughed at me because I, they couldn't figure out why I didn't know it was 1 John. And I think by that time I had been going to church for at least a year at that time. So it was really hard for me and really embarrassing. And in 2004, my second son was born. He was born approximately 11 weeks premature at two pounds, 6.4 ounces because my body completely failed. I had what's called HELP syndrome, which is high, high blood pressure, elevated liver platelets, and um, no, high blood pressure, elevated liver, and low blood, low platelets. Yeah. So I was basically like dying. In fact, they lifted me from one hospital to another hospital that had an NICU in an emergency situation um, because I was going to give birth way too early. And, um, you know, that's a long story. They did tell me that um, they didn't know if he would make it. It was a really hard time for me um, and my body was failing. And once my kidneys failed, they willed me in to do the uh, the c-section it was really really a tough time for me and so over the next few weeks i would learn uh, what it meant to surrender to god and the day that the doctors told me that at nine weeks old he would need to have exploratory surgery because they didn't know what was wrong with him you see he kept uh, performing and then he would fail and then they would they would bring him to what's called a continuing care unit and then he would go right back to the neonatal intensive care unit and over the course of those weeks he had things like neo um, necrotizing enteral colitis he had c difficile he did um, multiple times where he couldn't eat they, there were just so many things wrong with him that they couldn't figure out and so they said that they wanted to do exploratory surgery and when you're a mom and your child is four pounds at this time and nine weeks old, looking all kind of sad, <laughs> you know, he was like not thriving. Um, it's a hard thing to hear. And I remember one day in the car, just going to the hospital and asking the Lord if he would just, if I didn't get to be his mom, if I didn't get to take him home, that he would just take him home. And then I would see him when, when it was time. And, but Lord, if, if you would please, and I would just beg him, beg him, please let me be his mom. I just, I want to love him. So that was a hard prayer for me to pray. And the second I did that prayer, I knew that I was his child because I knew that I wanted his will and not mine. So the good news is, is that they did have, he did have exploratory surgery. It was supposed to take a couple hours. It ended up taking a lot more than that. And I remember going to the nurse saying, you know, what's going on with my son? I need, did he make it? Like that was kind of the first thing on my mind was, did he survive that surgery? Because I mean, you're looking at a four pound kid, like he's, like, he's literally this small. And uh, the nurse said he did. They found out that he had what's called malrotated intestines um, and that um, his intestines just didn't, didn't line up properly. And so what they did was a lad's procedure on him. And I'm happy to report that he is a healthy 15 year old boy today. Um, 
at that time, like, I, I just was so excited. Like, obviously, um, I think it took about nine, 10, 11, it took him until about 11 weeks. And then he was able to come home. And I, and I, and I thank God for all of that circumstance. It was the hardest time of my life, but I promise you, if I would have brought him home, like they couldn't even find out what was wrong with him in the NICU unit. So there was no way that someone who wasn't trained or wasn't trained in surgery or highly trained in neonatal intensive care, um, that they would have found it. So I don't think my son would be here alive today if it wasn't for that experience. And so I thank the Lord every day for that experience. Um, and after that, man, I just, I like love the Lord. Like I did everything, try to do everything again, you know, with being involved in the, this time it would be the mom's ministry. So I was highly involved in the mom's ministry. I was involved in the food ministry where we would take meals and the meals ministry is what it was called. Um, but again, the Bible was still so hard for me. I, I, whoa, it was so hard for me. Like I tried the Beth Moore study. I tried precepts where you do the little triangles and circles and underlines. Um, I tried John MacArthur studies. I had a commentary study guide. I led a life group. Um, I led a weight loss ministry. I had candles on my da- desk. I lit the candles when they lit and I tried everything. Like I even brought my coffee to Bible. You know, I'm like, here's my Bible. Here's my coffee. I'm ready to go. I did everything that I thought that I was supposed to do to really understand the Bible and have this wonderful relationship with the Lord. And I just couldn't do it. I mean, that happened for years. Like I would look at the Bible and I'm like, oh, it's so boring. Why do I have to do this? Like, I don't really like this. It's not fun. It's boring. And I don't get it. Like I just didn't get it. And I had every resource. Like it's not like I was lacking in anything. I had everything. And a friend of mine had sent me a message about a Bible journaling group. And she's like, Hey, uh, check this out. And that was like her message. And I looked at her message and I was like, "Mm, no, like people are scrapbooking their Bible. I barely want to read this thing. So I'm out like totally out. And over the course of a few months, I'm it's like, once you see Bible journaling, you can't unsee it. And so it just kept popping up in my newsfeed every time I looked around and I was like, oh my goodness, like people are still doing this. And one day I took a day off work and the Holy Spirit just called my heart and, and the Holy Spirit was like, look, just go try it. Like, just try it. And so I took a day off work cause I was really stressed. It was, I had a marketing business at the time and a lot of clients that need a lot of things. And so I just, I took a day off and it was a good idea. Uh, so I sat down, I had my candle, I had my coffee, I had my Bible. In fact, this is the Bible that I had um, and I still have it. It's kind of ratty, but it is the Bible that I used. And I got the Bible out and I started to read it. I had some rub-ons at the time and some coloring pencils that I used. And I opened up the Bible, just like first I prayed and I was like, Holy Spirit, like, please let me know like what you want me to, to read. And I opened up the book, no, no kidding to Mark chapter 16, which is the resurrection of Christ. And what caught my eye is the red part of the section. (laughs) So I read the whole thing. I read the chapter in the first, and, and then I looked at the red section. The red section says, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. And it's kind of hard when you feel like you don't really know the word to take that, um, command to preach. Like, I don't feel like I'm comfortable. I don't feel like I'm qualified to go tell people about the Bible because I don't even like to read it. Um, so I sat down and I kind of took that in and then I grabbed my rub-ons and I put a little rub on in the Bible. And all of a sudden I was like, Oh, well that makes sense. And then I started to draw, let me just kind of show you so you can see, you can see the section here. So I put the rub on, on first. And then I started to draw that little tomb. I think you can see it here in this corner. And all of a sudden, I've really understood the magnitude of what Jesus did for us on the cross and the magnitude of him rising again. It's like not doesn't really happen. You know what I mean? Like Jesus is amazing. Like the fact that he died on the cross for my sins so that I can have a relationship with God so that God sees me, you know, pure and blameless that I could be righteous before him. Um, but and, and you know, he gives me grace even though I sin and I, and even though like I'm trying not to sin, I still sin. It's like, it's like this never ending battle while we're here on earth. And it changed my life. Like I, 
I, I didn't know what to, how to respond to it. So the first thing I did was I texted my husband. I was like, you will not believe what just happened to me. I read the Bible and I understood it. Like I didn't need a commentary. I didn't need a study guide. I didn't need like Joyce Myers. I didn't need anybody. Like I understood it because the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart as I was reading it. And I really, I can't tell you like how much of a weight that lifted from my soul. Like I can now understand the Bible. I can now read it and have fun with it. And it's fun. Like I Bible journaled every day for two years after that. I read the Bible from the from the beginning to the end, I just started diving deep into the Bible like you wouldn't know. And I started becoming transformed. I can tell you more stories about the Bible. I can tell you more verses about the Bible. I never could memorize a verse before this, except for to recite it in in the Bible study and then be done with it so I can move on with my life. Like now I know verses because they're on my heart. And that's all because that I, I sit down and I read the Bible and I open up his word and I engage with it and I have fun with it. And it brings me joy and peace and excitement. Every time I open it, I can't tell you how amazing and fun it is to be in the word. And this has transformed me because before this, I never wanted, I just didn't want to do it. It was just work and study and it felt so sterile. And now it feels so exciting and alive and creative. And I can't like, (laughs) if you can't hear by now, I love it. The first time and that I've ever been able to get into the word without having someone else interpret it for me. And now it's so important for me because I'll go to churches sometimes and they won't even, nobody will have a Bible. A pastor sometimes won't even have a Bible and then he'll misquote. And then I'm like, oh no, okay, well, let me look, you know, what's going on, right? Because I know the word and I can discern what God is saying. And what the Holy Spirit is saying in my my life, I have this really close relationship with the Lord. I have this really intimate relationship with Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit guides me. Like when people say something and they they tell me what to do, I don't do it unless I consult the Holy Spirit. And it's not like I sit down and pray for like a gazillion hours a day. No, I'm just like, I'm in tune with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I pray every day. Yes, I get into the word every day. Yes, it doesn't have to take that long. It can literally take me. I mean, literally my commitment is in the morning, open up the Bible, spend five minutes, move on. And I know that that may seem like not enough time to you, but that's okay because you know what? Throughout the day, maybe there are other touch points. Maybe I get a chance to sit down and do some Bible journaling for an hour, or maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes or however many times I have. The more time that I'm in the Bible, the more time my spirit is lifted and I am in joy. I am in joy. And what's amazing about Bible journaling is at this time, um, at this time, your brain works together. So usually you have an analytical side of your brain and you have a creative side of your brain. Well, usually one or the other is working. When you do Bible journaling, you actually turn on both. You turn on the analytical side of the brain, which uh, like tries to understand the Bible and tries to interpret it and tries to, you know, really understand what it's saying and, you know, try to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and what you should do with that information. But then you have the creative side of your brain. That's just like, and what does that look like? Like, what does that look like from, from a, you know, a visual standpoint? And so you get the analytical and the visual at the same time. And those two connections spark true understanding in the word especially if you are a visual learner. And so I just can't tell you enough how much it has changed my life and continues to change my life. I continue to, you know, push harder, uh, work harder, um, work smarter and do everything for the glory of the Lord. I have more goals today for his kingdom than I ever have than I've ever had in my life, let alone for goals in my life. Like everything now I'm like, okay, you know, I have this goal and like one of my goals is to do a million Bibles, to give a million Bibles away over the course of my lifetime. If you think about that goal, that's not really realistic. It's not very, you know, uh, if I think about my human self and if I can actually do it, I look at that goal and I'm like, gee, girl, you have like a few years left. Like you got like a couple decades left. Like, how are you going to get a million Bibles? Right. And so God's going to do this. Like, I know that God is, is bigger than I am. And so I get to be on this journey of just working as hard as I can to bring him the glory. Like it's amazing and fun. And there's no, there's really no pressure because it's his will. (laughs) 
like, you know, and it's a, there's a lot of turns and things that I think I should go this way. And then he's like, oh, oh, wrong way, go over that way. And yeah, the, the journey is not easy. The journey sometimes is filled with pain. I mean, I had a knee surgery in 2019, early in 2019. I've, I've had illnesses. I've had things, strongholds in my life that I'm working through. There's, it's just kind of life, right? But I get to be in life with God in this intimate, close relationship. And the reason why I share this with you is because I want this for you too. And so today I'm here to just to share with you that you can get the free 10 day Bible journaling course, absolutely free. I put it the link below. It doesn't cost you anything. I literally created this so that anyone can start. If you don't want to take the course, that's totally okay. Here are a few tips that I want you to kind of remember as you go ahead and get started. And the first thing is, is that you should have a method. So you should have a method before you start to do Bible journaling. I use the God method. So I pray to the Lord, ask him to grow me, ask him to tell me whatever it is I need to understand as I open up the word. So I go to the word, um, having asked the Lord to present to me what he has for me. Um, then the next one is, O, which is observe. And as I'm doing my Bible journaling, I'm looking to see what is the Holy Spirit saying to me? Is the Holy Spirit saying anything to me? Are there things in my life that I feel convicted on? Are there things in my life that I think I need to do more for? And so I'm doing some observation there, you know, and sometimes it's big and other times it's small. And sometimes it's like, it's preparation for some for something that is not even mine. Um, maybe it's something that, you know, somebody will bring something into my life and I'm like, huh, I just heard about that. God just shared that with me. And, you know, in Matthew, as I was reading that. So it's just kind of interesting how, when you're connected with the Holy Spirit, how things start to make a lot of sense to you, things that start to come in your life. And then the last thing is the design and draw part. And we talk about design and draw. Do not like compare yourself to others. Just draw like a doodle. I mean, clearly you can see like that is not amazing art, is it? <laughs> it's literally a circle and some notes and you can do doodles or you can put a rub on in there. You can even just plop a sticker. No big deal, but start with what you have. You don't need a lot of things and uh, you can start with just access to the word. And if you're watching this video, you have access to the word, a pen, a piece of paper, and you're done. You can literally get started with Bible journaling today and have the amazing transformation. I just pray that you have, have the amazing transformation that I have had in my life. Goodbye.